a great honor to be in the same panel as um, uh, Samarda and Anuj Maheshwari on these very important topics. And um, most importantly, my gratitude to Panchi. My apologies for not being there. I'm actually in Vancouver. It's five o'clock in the morning here, but delighted to be with all of you, um, you know, looking forward. This is a very important topic that, um, that, that I want to speak on for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, only this condition itself has been described uh, formally in the last 50 to 60 years. But can you imagine in 50 to 60 years, um, a medical condition has taken this kind of a Vishwaroop and is also now being thought of as the mother of all NCDs. Very quickly, what NCDs are and the rise and rise of NCDs, as I call it, um, what COVID has done to NCDs and the rise of gestational diabetes, especially now during COVID. And then there's this um, link between GDM and the non-communicable diseases and the transgenerational NCD risks. And as the title of this uh, session, what should physicians know and do? Okay, so uh, again, I'm, I'm stuck in this. Okay, can you move the slide? I'll just say next, next please. So the four major non-communicable diseases that mean the four big ones are cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes or diabetes in general, chronic respiratory diseases and cancer. So what is the connection between gestational diabetes and all of these conditions is what we will you know, talk about. Next slide, please. So first to show you the rise and rise of communicable, non-communicable diseases in, in India, as you can see from this graph, it has just you know skyrocketed between 1990 and 2020. Of course, 2020 changed things um, a lot on its head uh, due to COVID. So communicable diseases, um, communicable diseases became um, uh, you know the big topic in the last two two and a half years. But um, still, be that as it may, um, non-communicable diseases are the biggest players for so many reasons and I'll show you. Next slide, please. So you can see cancers, ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, all showing tremendous rights. And the other things, the infections, usually either going down or kind of, you know, plateauing, except of course injuries and road traffic accidents. But all of those things, whether it's ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, and also now cancers are high in people with type 2 diabetes. We know that. And also the link between gestational diabetes and this is something that I will show you now. Next slide, please. The top three things that I just mentioned, ischemic heart disease, um, COPD, and stroke, all of these things, things are, even though diabetes is mentioned only as number, gone up from number 11 to number eight. Diabetes is a big, giant risk factor for the top three non-communicable diseases. Next slide, please. And not only is there a increase in the, the scope of the problem is very high, but if you also see an uneven economic burden of non-communicable disease among Indian households, this is a both in the public sector and private sector. This is particularly relevant to women because 70% of the world's poor are women. And many people, you know, when they, especially post-COVID, have been pushed below the poverty line. Next slide. Um, and about missing work, caregiving, and premature death, non-communicable diseases play a very big part. Next slide. What, uh, what has COVID done to non-communicable diseases? This is a wonderful slide, and I would like everyone to take a few seconds to look at it. Whether it is TB or malaria, which, is, which are communicable diseases, but look at things like non-communicable NCDs, look at things like maternal and child health and poverty, which I've already mentioned. All of these conditions have taken a giant beating due to COVID. 
patients have not been able to come for follow up or have been ignoring their symptoms, have not had access to healthcare. More importantly, COVID itself has increased the risk of many of these conditions. Next slide, please. Now, coming to gestational diabetes, I'm just trying to marry the non communicable diseases with gestational diabetes. Look, you look at gestational diabetes, and this is for, and you look at South Asia, Southeast Asia, the green line on top between 1990 and projection for, um, projection for 2030, the tremendous rise in the uh, increase in gestational diabetes. And reports from the UK, US and other places have said that post COVID in the US, there has been a 30% increase in the risk of gestational diabetes. The reasons are many, I'm not going to go into it. Nevertheless, the, the risk of GDM has gone up probably in our country as well. Next slide, please. Now, the essence of today's presentation is this. When a mother has gestational diabetes, it's not only her, but also the child, especially the in the index pregnancy, the first offspring, you can see that, if she has GDM, just GDM pregnancy, she goes into a high risk trajectory in, for chronic diseases. If she has GDM in the next pregnancy, the trajectory goes up even higher. The same risk, corresponding NCD risk is also present, typically in the first offspring. Next slide, please. Now, first non-communicable disease link that I want to show is type 2 diabetes. We have known forever that the gestational diabetes biggest risk is future risk of type 2 diabetes. We knew that it was high, but more recent data and meta-analysis have shown that the risk could be 10 times, 11 times higher in women with GDM than compared to women who did not have GDM. Next slide, please. When does this risk start? You can see from this wonderful study that it can even within the first three months one year, within three years, the risk of dysglycemia is, is much higher, not only in people with frank GDM and also people who have abnormal glucose challenge tests or a, a gestational impaired glucose tolerance. Even they are at greater risk for dysglycemia in the near future and not in the distant future. Next slide. So Dr. Ravi Ratnakaran has very nicely shown that women who develop GDM are people who actually start out with a poor beta cell function. So therefore, you can see what could happen to them in the years going forward, that this pregnancy was actually more like a, a stress test. It brought out, it unmasked their tendency for these conditions. And many researchers have shown this connection, which means that women with GDM are already marked individuals and therefore, as physicians, the most important thing that we can do is not let them out of our sight as soon as this pregnancy is over, thinking this is only a, a transient hyperglycemia of pregnancy. Next slide, please. Now, look at this. Underlying metabolic defect is a chronic beta cell dysfunction, insulin resistance. Then there is an accrual of all the cardiometabolic risk factors. And Anuj had talked about this. And then there's cardiometabolic disease outcomes like type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And we should stop thinking, you know, thinking that it is only diabetes and only cardiovascular disease, which are big by themselves, but there's also been linked to chronic kidney disease. And then, of course, liver disease and retinal disease. These are all linked to type 2 diabetes and then heart failure, which is very, very high in women compared to men. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. And obviously, if the woman is overweight, if the BMI is higher, she is going to have a much greater risk and an earlier onset of type 2 diabetes if she has had gestational diabetes. Next slide, please. You have to move the slides faster. Okay, so how long does this heightened risk of type 2 diabetes last? We used to think 10 years. It, there's data to show it can be as long as 23 years and more recent data, which was just published in 2022, has said that this risk can last up to 35 years after the gestational diabetes pregnancy. Next slide, please. So 
So, which means a lifelong protection of these women is very, very important by all of us. And how do we screen these people? This lovely study showed that just a fasting sugar could miss people who have who had GVM who go on to develop, um, you know, type two diabetes, the normal glucose tolerance versus the GVM. That we should really be looking at a two-hour post seventy-five gram glucose. Next slide, please. But definitely a postpartum. The other uh, postprandial, the other risk of GVM is, of course, the GVM recurs in the subsequent pregnancies. And as each pregnancy, the GDM uh, comes on, their risk for future chronic disease keeps going up. Next slide. And then this very important slide, persistence of risk for type 2 diabetes. Um, I think I showed this about um, obesity. Let's come back again. Next slide, please. Now, cardiovascular disease. I talked about type 2 diabetes, now about cardiovascular disease. So um, very important that Pre-existing phenotypes like obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, glucose intolerance, we know are risk factors for cardiovascular disease. But these non-traditional risk factors like preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, babies who are born small, preterm deliveries, we tend to miss these non-traditional risk factors as risk factors for cardiovascular disease um, in, in women because we see inflammation, endothelial dysfunction, impaired hemodynamic adaptation are all common soil for all of these conditions. Next slide, please. Now, so gestational diabetes leads to abnormal maternal glucose lipids, inflammatory response. In the fetus, fetal insulin goes up, therefore fetal macrosomia is happening. There are epigenetic DNA modifications that are affecting the offspring energy balance and metabolism. Now, this leads to childhood and then the child, as it grows into adulthood, increased risk of diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Now you can see not only NCD risk is going up in the mother, NCD risk is going up in the offspring as well. And now you can see why truly GDM is the mother of NCDs. Next slide, please. Now, ischemic heart disease, hypertension, and women with previous GDM. So for the in general practice for preventive intervention, this is a very important group. Next slide, please. So you see here, very lovely representation. Diabetes goes up tremendously. Hypertension is high. Ischemic heart disease is high. Stroke and, um, and, and TIAs, they did not show a very significant difference, but definitely the risk is high. Next slide, please. The American College of Cardiology has taken it upon itself, and I think a wonderful thing, to, um, to uh, educate physicians and cardiologists and OBGYNs about what are the risk factors for cardiovascular disease in women. And I want to show on the left panel, gestational diabetes is something I have circled. But on the right panel, the under-recognized, some more risk factors like psychosocial risk factors, intimate partner abuse, socioeconomic deprivation, environmental risk factors like pollution. So as physicians, I think we should also pay attention to these risk factors in our women and not be typically how we have been A1C centric or just a lipid centric. Uh, next slide, please. Cardiovascular disease, uh, Dr. Ravi Ratnakarin has shown that this is not due to type 2 diabetes developing in women with GDM. The GDM itself increases the risk of cardiovascular disease in women. Next slide. And significant risk factor for maternal long-term renal disease, something that we have not appreciated uh, for a very long time. This was published in the age of. Next slide. One of the big reasons for all this happening is also postpartum gestational weight gain. So as physicians, I think we need to counsel our women on what they should do about gestational weight or shedding it and not gaining weight postpartum, and as you can see, as the gestational weight gain is retained, there are greater chance of uh, non-communicable diseases in the future. Next slide. The link between cancer and, um, and DDM, there are studies showing there is a link and studies showing that there may not be a link, that it may be primarily due to development of type 2 diabetes. And be that as it may, women with type 2 diabetes have a 27% increased risk of cancer compared to women 
who um, you know do not have diabetes. So that itself is a huge cancer risk that we need to keep in mind. And postpartum weight changes, which I just mentioned. In the first year after delivery, women start having abnormal um, lipid profiles and abnormal cardiometabolic profiles. In the first year, next slide. And therefore, um, in the next two slides, I'm going to show something about um, offspring and a little bit about what physicians can do. And mental stress. When women is given a diagnosis of GDM, they may develop a lot of um, an emotional reaction. They may have concerns about dealing with it, and they may have anxiety and even get depressed. And this could continue postpartum. We've heard about diabetes distress. Next slide. When women are stressed, this has impact on the baby as well. So on stress, what GDM does to stress, two times increased risk of stress. Next slide, please. And this is a very important concept. What does GDM do to the baby? And what does the stress do, do to the baby? Next slide. When mother is stressed during pregnancy, the cortisol levels, the CRH production can go up and the baby can get stressed also. Next slide. And there is a new concept that I want to introduce today that we have to really the next generations matter and transgenerational impact of whatever we do and whatever illness we are dealing with is very, very important. You will see that there is a baby within this baby in this picture with I have put in just to show that it's not just transgenerational, but a multi-generational impact that GDM is causing. Next slide, please. So you can keep uh, moving the slide. This is an animated slide. So when a mother has G when a mother has GDM, her baby has G uh, can develop diabetes. If it's a girl, she can develop GDM, and if she has a baby girl. That girl can also develop diabetes and gestational diabetes. So truly mother of NCDs and offspring diabetes, excellent representation of that and offspring overweight and visceral adiposity in mothers who have had GDM or mothers who are overweight. Next slide, please. Traditionally, we have never looked at stress as something more than, um, you know, what could happen to the mother. But maternal stress, how it affects the baby, not only brain development, emotional development, but also um, low birth weight has been linked to stress in, the, in maternal stress and low birth weight. So birth outcomes have also been affected by stress. Next slide, please. So when, as I mentioned before, stress actually induces some changes in fetal programming, the Barker hypothesis. Next slide. So we need to start looking at very important concept and, and low birth weight is increased, associated with increased risk of adult chronic disease, which is what we are talking about. In non <laughs> Next slide, please. And if the mother, if, if low birth weight happens to a baby, and if it happens to be a girl, she is at risk for future gestational diabetes. So optimizing birth weight is another thing that practicing physicians have to look at. And that comes from maternal nutrition, something that we need to look at preconception and during pregnancy, not overnutrition and definitely not undernutrition as well. Next slide, please. So I want to extend the Barker hypothesis. Is maternal stress a teratogen or a developmental origin? of adult disease. And if we start thinking on these lines, some of the you know, answers we have been looking for, why babies are born small in our country, why mothers don't gain enough weight. So we need to pay a lot of attention to mental health as well. I just want to mention here, mental health is also now the fifth non most important non-communicable disease that we look at. Next slide, please. So we have been somewhat myopic about looking at um, you know, uh, babies and pregnancies and looking only at um, the health of the baby in terms of um, pregnancy. We are all very happy as soon as a healthy baby is born. We are not looking at the mother and what is our long-term, um, you know, chronic disease outcomes and also for the baby as well. Next slide, please. So as physicians, we have to change the way we think. We have to pay attention to the whole Barker hypothesis. Next slide, please. 
And there is a new, another new concept I want to introduce. It's called the reverse Barker hypothesis. We only talk about baby and fetal programming. Next slide. But when, when the mother has gestational diabetes or gestational hypertension, or she delivers a low birth weight, we know that these complications are predicted by first trimester algorithms. These are pre-existing maternal phenotypes. They accelerate chronic disease. So therefore, they also indicate the mother's future chronic disease, maybe even the grandparents' risk for chronic disease. So we have to think of also reverse Barker hypothesis. Next slide, please. So one um, um, non-communicable disease we did not talk about was chronic obstructive lung disease. Just want to show you, even that is affected by GDM. As you can see here, there are functional defects and mechanisms as far as the baby goes and in future developing chronic lung disease. So the whole picture is complete. GDM increases the risk pretty much of all non-communicable diseases, either directly or indirectly through development of type 2 diabetes. And therefore, we need to give it the importance that it deserves and elevate it to the most important public health issue of our time. Next slide, please. So what should be done? I'll finish in the next three slides. Next slide, please. What should we do? World Diabetes Day is coming up. This year's theme is education to protect tomorrow. Let's bring in gestational diabetes as an important topic for us to talk about. Next slide. When mothers with GDM um, deliver and go home, let us bring them back within six to 12 weeks recheck them for um, glucose, prescribe contraception, prescribe exclusive breastfeeding, which we should do right from the beginning, talk to them about it, and keep following them up every six months to one year for, um, you know, for the dysglycemia and development of type 2 diabetes. And also look at this as preconception care for the next pregnancy. Next slide. So most important that physicians should do is all pregnancy should be planned, not intended, but planned and make sure that we are not dealing with any degree of glucose intolerance and that we correct that and bring their, optimize their weight before they walk into a pregnancy. That is the best thing that we can do for our women. Next slide. And this wonderful, lovely slide summarizes everything. So current challenges and research gaps in GDM. We, we have to do preconception counseling, we have to optimize risk factors, pay attention to maternal nutrition, reduce maternal obesity. This is all preconception. I, then first trimester, identify existing DM or MODI should have been done sooner. Early detection of GDM and we keep looking for the novel biomarkers. And then in the in the last part, you know, how do we deal with the management of GDM and uh, following up these women, especially postpartum breastfeeding and, and a lifelong, um, you know, preventive, um, a preventive health approach lifelong after this pregnancy and not forget about it. Um, thank you so much for patient hearing. I apologize for this, um, you know, delay in, um, in the slides moving forward. Um, and thank you so much. Again.